are part of the lab. Uh, I have two stars here. Uh, the yellow one has a mass of 60, and the purple one has a mass of 30. And I want to figure out how fast do they need to go to uh, be in circular orbits. The key thing is they're going to be in a circular orbit about their common center of mass. So first, let's find their center of mass. So if you remember, we pretend they're playing seesaw. And where should I put the fulcrum of the seesaw so they balance closer to the heavier one, right? You might even be able to guess where that is because of the numbers I picked. You can see I put the yellow mass at negative 300 and the purple mass at zero. So the distance between them is 300. So I want to figure out this distance here, which I'm going to call RA, because uh, it's going to be star A and star B. And so there is a fancy center mass equation. Feel free to use that. But what I kind of remember is how to make these guys balance. Some of the torques equals zero. And so the mass of A, you can put a G there if you want, but we know that's going to cancel out the mass of A times its lever arm. We're summing the torques about the fulcrum. Uh, minus the mass of B times its lever arm, which is going to be 300 minus RA. Right, that's eventually we'll call that RB here. And that has to add up to zero. And so I get 60 RA minus 30 times 300 minus RA equals zero. So let's put that up here, 60 RA minus and 30 times 300 is going to be 9,000. And then it's minus 30 times minus RA, so plus 30 RA. That all adds up to zero. So I get 90 RA equals 9,000, or RA is 100. And I think you can see I pretty much put it there to start with. So we know RB, oops, RB then is 200. And so what's going to happen is, uh, a is going to orbit the center of mass like that, and B is going to orbit the center of mass like this. Two circles, and they always stay in a line, so they're going to take the same amount of time to go around. They have the same period, the same angular velocity. Let's figure out what their linear velocities are. So remember these radii. We'll put them up there in a little bit, but we're done with this, so let's erase that. And so now I need to figure out the velocities of each one. And let's do B first. And so there's a force of gravity of star A on star B. It's supposed to be F sub G there. And the direction of the acceleration toward the center of the circle it's going to be going in. Uh, we've seen this before for circular orbits. Some of the forces equals MA. And it is a centripetal acceleration. And we know that is V squared over R. So I get the force of gravity is, this is going to be a, uh, B's mass, so MB and B's velocity, and that would be uh, the radius, because uh, it's orbiting this, so that would be the radius RB. And when I put in the force of gravity equation, it's G mass of A mass of B over, well over what? It's the distance between their centers. It's not the same as the radius of the circle that star B is going to be going in. So it's RA plus RB, and that equals MB, BB squared over RB. So if you go back and look at your notes for circular orbit speed, we made the assumption that one mass was a lot greater than the other mass. And that made it so, and it's a B there, that made it so this R was the same as this one, but that's not true anymore. They're orbiting a point well outside the center of this other star. And so it doesn't simplify as much. We can divide both sides by MB, and solving for the velocity of B, I get the square root of G M A R B over R A 
plus RB squared. And so in this problem, that is the square root. Remember, G is 10,000 in the program. And the mass of A is 60. And RB, we figured out, was 200. And then RA plus RB is a whole separation, so you just put in 300 squared. And that comes out to, um, I'm going to round to the nearest one because the program doesn't take digits, 37 and whatever units the program's using. And so that would be the velocity of star B. To get A, you'd go through the same process. Free body diagram, force of gravity, that's the direction of the acceleration, and I encourage you to do that on the lab uh, so you learn it, because eventually you'll be asked to show that you've learned it, and it's better to practice on a lab than on a test. And so you go through that, and you're going to get something like this, Except you might guess it's going to be VA is GMB RA over, well, RB plus RA squared. So you should be able to show that. Another way to do it is, remember their angular velocity is the same. And so VB is omega RB. And so that means omega is VB over RB. And that comes out to uh, point one eight. 26 radians per second. So VA is omega RA and it's the same omega. So it's 0.1826 times 100. And so you get 18.3. I'm just going to put 18 because you can't put in decimals in the program. So I'm going to erase all this. So if you want to see it, just scroll back. And let's put the numbers in and see what happens. And so we want to have uh, star um, A going down and star B going up or conversely star A going up and star B going down and oops I guess I moved that one and so we found out that star uh, A's velocity was 18 and I'm going to put in negative 18 and star B's that was the first one we found we found out it was 37, so I put in a positive 37. Have it on accurate, showing the grid. Start, and let's see if it works. And so if it works, we should see star A, the yellow one, uh, in a circular orbit about the center of mass, which was this point. And we should see star B in a circular orbit about the same point. And it should take them the same amount of time to go around once. And so it sure looks like that's going to happen. Uh, looks like we're a little off here because remember we had to round off. Uh, but still pretty good. If they let you put in decimals or we picked some other numbers. I think the one in the lab will work out better. And so give this one a try. Um, if you had trouble, you can watch this again.